chapter 24. John knew significant information had been left off of Rebecca's admission forms. He had overlooked the subtle background details and accepted the data as trivial. Now he wondered if there had been no mistake. Perhaps the information was deliberately missing. He turned to Anita for help. Did you know some of the patient's files are incomplete? What are you talking about? She asked. Whose? Rebecca Brownell's file is missing information. Why are you telling me this now? She gave John a perplexed look and he knew what was coming. I thought I received a memo about there being a switch in rotations. Aren't you over a different group? Um, well, he hunted for the words. There were just a few questions I had and I never got around to asking you. I've just been curious about what answers you can give me. He stretched his legs, leaned back in his chair, and tried to appear casual in his request. Do you have a copy of Rebecca's information? Of course, Anita said. Can I see it? Why? What do you need it for? This would be tough, but still, he had come prepared. There were certain words that would have an impact, which could influence her to a system. John took a moment to clear his throat. Well, I've been meaning to talk to you about this for a while now. Some information is missing, and I just wanted you to be aware. Are you sure? Everything you do is always so perfect and exact. I was surprised this slipped by you. Since this concerned me, I thought I'd let you know. Thought you might like to fill in the mistakes. Anita didn't say anything but appeared to be deep in thought. Then she pushed her chair away from her desk and walked back into a small room filled with filing cabinets. Threat of errors panicked Anita. His plan was working. She returned to her seat with the manila folder. Not complete? In what way? She skimmed each page. It's all here. Are you sure? John asked. I don't know what you're referring to, but her records are complete. She flipped through the pages a second time. Her medical charts are all up to date. Her quarterly overviews look good. Team evaluations are... No, John said. It's her personal history. It's not complete. Okay, what do you want? Full name, Rebecca Ann Brownell. Birth date, March 23rd, 1968. Hair color, brown. Eye color, green. Admittance date, December 4th, 1989. Looks fine to me. John wanted that file. He was envious of the information accessible to her, but out of his reach. His hand tried to keep up, quickly scrawling out the names and numbers on a small concealed notebook. Keep reading, he said. Look at the part about her family history. Father, Robert Daniel Brownell. Birth date, September 8, 1931. Deceased, January 10, 1984. Cause of death, heart failure. Mother, Mia Katharina Nelson. Birth date, January 26, 1937. Deceased, June 6, 1970. Cause of death, pneumonia. It's all here. Are any other relatives listed? No, that's it. See, that's my point. It's incomplete. Information is missing. It's not, Dr. Sanders. It says here there's no record of any other living blood relative. So she didn't have siblings, no aunts or uncles, no relative who would claim her. Just because the Brownells lacked strong family ties doesn't mean our records are incomplete. She had a husband, John said. So? I've looked extensively through her files and can find no information about him, about when they got married, about their separation. In fact, there's no account of her arrival to the hospital. Why is that? I don't know. Those were pre-Anita days. The filing system was a nightmare. I was hired the following February, and now, because of me, records are in order. But she had a husband, right? You told me that. Sure. That's how the story goes. I've fought with Rebecca, trying to get her to talk about her marriage but she won't tell me anything. Don't we have any information about it? Apparently not. Those are some pretty important facts. We should have that information somewhere, shouldn't we? I need to look down at the papers and thought for a moment. There was an edge in her voice when she said, The marriage probably was a short-lived thing. I'd imagine her husband got that thing annulled. Other than the emotional impact on Rebecca, I doubt the information would be that useful. Who brought her in here? Like I said, that was before my time. 
The story goes it was her husband, but who's to say? She began shuffling the papers back into the folder. Maybe a daycare facility turned her in when she tried to get them to watch her blanket. She snickered at a joke. I don't know, John. Wait, he said. On my first day here, you told me the story about her telling her husband she wanted children. He said no. So the next day, she told him she had a kid and started carrying around a bundle. Isn't that right? How did you know all that? Her face tightened. Hmm, where did I hear that? John held his breath while Anita thought. That's right, she said to herself. I'd forgotten about that. Originally, I did all the paperwork when visitors came. Now security deals with that headache. But in the beginning, it was handled through me. So what does that mean? During my first month here, a lady came to see Rebecca. She was the only visitor I've ever known to come and see that girl. It was... Anita squinted as if she could see the guest in front of her. That's right, I remember now. I've dealt with so many patients and paperwork and seen enough faces. Sometimes it's hard to keep it all straight. Who was it? Her nanny, Anita said. What do you remember about her? As a child, Rebecca had been in her care. Apparently for quite a few years, the lady didn't care for Rebecca's husband at all. In fact, she blamed the man for Rebecca's condition, said it was a pity that such a sweet thing ended up like this. Did she tell you his name? Well, let's see. She talked a lot about Rebecca, called her stubborn but sweet. She said she would have come to see Rebecca sooner, but hadn't known what had happened until she saw the house up for sale. House for sale? You're right. There was a bit of a story about her husband... What was his name? Was it Rick? Maybe it was Dick. Or Nick? I don't remember. It's been so long ago. One of those ick names. Anyway, Rebecca's father was wealthy. Very wealthy, if I remember correctly. Inheritance, investments, playing the market right, something like that. Anyway, he turned lots of money into lots more money. And from early on, the nanny had taken care of Rebecca. Okay. Well, the father wasn't around much, and even when he was, he wasn't really there. Something like that. What else did she say? Her father died, and this ick man came along and didn't want Nanny having anything to do with Rebecca, so she hadn't heard or seen Rebecca in years. Apparently, when Rebecca married this man, they stayed in the Brownells' home. The Nanny swore the man was after Rebecca's inheritance, but a few years later, she drove by the house and saw it for sale. She was surprised. When she realized the home was vacant, she called the realtor to find out what had happened. Turns out, Hubby said wife went crazy and went to a mental hospital, so he decided to get a fresh start and move on. Did Rebecca's nanny say anything else about him? She said she tried to get in touch with the husband, but he made himself unavailable and refused to answer her questions about Rebecca, so the lady started calling around until she got a hold of us. This is important. That's right, Anita said to herself. I sat with her while she filled out her visitor's pass, as she went on and on, talked about what scum Rebecca's husband was, how horribly he had treated her, and how it was all about money. Something about a business deal between him and her father. Apparently, the deal went sour, and the husband felt robbed, so he took his revenge out on Rebecca. Something like that. The lady just got more and more livid while she talked about him. Why isn't any of this documented? I'm not the doctor. That's not my job. Still, I just happened to be the closest ear when that lady decided to spout off. I hadn't even thought about it until you reminded me. Thanks, Anita. So is that the type of information you wanted? It's something. There's no mention of what the nanny's name is in Rebecca's file, is there? Anita shifted through the documents. Nope. You have a condensed version here because she lived a sheltered life. There aren't any contacts who would volunteer information about her, and you aren't going to get answers from Rebecca. Her husband should have been listed as a contact, don't ask me, Anita shrugged. Like I said, I wasn't here. Gravers would know. Talk to him. That was an unlikely avenue for answers. I have one other question for you, John said. Can I see your financial records? Can't help you there. Okay, then tell me how she has the funds to be here. I'm sure she has the money. Her family was well off. With her father's wealth, she has the funds. She could live out her days here if she needed to. Live out her days here? He stared at her in disbelief. What's wrong? Where did you hear that? He 
he asked. Why did you say that? It's a saying, Sanders. Calm down. Is she stuck here because she can afford it for her lifetime? What's with you? It's just a saying. John leaned across the desk and spoke his words with clarity and strength. Is Rebecca here because she's financially feeding this institution? What? she said. What are you talking about? From her face, John knew his answer. She was unaware. Her statement was harmless. Anita pulled back and closed Rebecca's file. You're scaring me, Dr. Sanders. Wait, Anita, I'm sorry. Please, let me just look at her financial record. No. She pushed her chair away from the desk. You're not her doctor anymore. I shouldn't have shared any of this with you. You need to focus your time and energies on your new area. She shook her head. Why do you want to know all of this anyway? You're right. I need to move on. But just tell me, what's the waiting list like? You told me before there was a long list to get in. How long is long? Right now, it's three pages. So how many is that? John, there is so much to be taken into consideration. You look at a whole line of requirements. Certain circumstances might place them on the waiting list. Can you give me an idea how many that is? What? Are you asking me to count each name? Why are you asking me these questions? No, you're fine, he said quickly. Thanks for your help. You're wonderful, Anita. Everyone comes to you because you have all the answers. If I need anything, you're the person I can ask. But what do these questions have to do with you, John? Her face appeared stiff. He drew in a breath, then spoke softly. It's like anything. I've put too much into this, and I'm not quite ready to give it up. I feel like I was making headway with some of the patients, and I'm struggling to turn it all over to Dr. Milton. I guess I'm too attached. Dr. Milton? Anita drew back. I must have skinned the list. I didn't realize that's who she's paired with. Why? What is it? Nothing. He's fine. You have this look on your face. Nothing, she repeated, her shoulders relaxed. It's just my own opinion. Well, share it with me. She avoided his eyes. You know who he is. Yeah, I've talked to him a bit. He seems fine. John held the caution in his voice. He is fine. She gave a quick shrug. I just think he's past his most successful stage of life. What does that mean? He's a little slow, very conventional, extremely predictable, and three years behind from when he should have retired. But Dr. Grabers loves him. I see, John said. Perhaps it was too clear why Dr. Milton had been chosen. Can I please see Rebecca's financial records? No, John. Please, I won't ask any other favors. I can't show you that. All right, then tell me this. Is every patient's admittance bill the same? There's a lot to take into consideration. Like what? Like limited insurance coverage, type of treatment, extent of stay, any extra care required, all sorts of various factors to take into account. So it varies for each patient? There are established fees for all of them, then we go from there. Just give me an idea of what Rebecca's setup is. I can't, she said firmly. Then she left her chair and entered the file room. When she came back, Rebecca's file was gone. The conversation was over. John stood to leave. I wish I could help you, Anita said. So do I. But I can't. You're doing what you have to do. He turned his back on her and headed for the door. See you later. Listen, she said, her voice a tad quieter. There are a couple patients whose plans are a little more complex. John paused, then turned around. And Rebecca is one of them. It would take too much time for me to deal with them and their special circumstances. I have too much to do as it is, so I had no problem passing over some of my work. Sorry I can't help, but I don't have Rebecca's financial records. Who does? Who would have those details? Dr. Gravers said he'd take care of it. He has the information. You'll need to talk to him.